Greetings and welcome. My name is Joe Macbeth and I'm the president and CEO of the National Alliance for Direct Support Professionals. And welcome to our webinar, The Facts About COVID-19 Vaccines for Direct Support Professionals. You know, after 10 months of an incredibly challenging and stressful um, time during the pandemic where direct support professionals have been front and center of so many challenges, Finally, this month, we see some light at the end of the tunnel with the introduction of some very promising vaccines. Now, we know there's a lot of confusion and there's a lot of concern, especially from our direct support professionals. If you monitor our Facebook page where we have about 23,000 people, you'll see for yourselves for and a lot of information, a lot of the um, resources that do not come from credible sources, and just a lot of confusion. Well, because of that, we've invited our national medical advisor and good friend, Dr. Rick Rader, who has done several webinars for us regarding the coronavirus since March. In fact, I was just on our YouTube page and I counted up, we've had, about, uh, this is the fifth webinar that Dr. Rader has done with us. And all combined, his webinars have told around 50,000 views. So the information that the doctor gives is from reliable and credible sources. He is the authority uh, for us at the NADSP. And um, he has been a incredibly rich resource for information for us. So Dr. Rader, um, if you want to advance to the next slide, I will kind of share with um, our listeners some of your credentials. Um, Dr. Rader works for as a director of the Habilitation Center at Orange Grove Center in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And as you can see, he's involved with a lot of different medical areas regarding people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Among them, uh, recently appointed to the um, to the uh, Council on Disabilities in Washington, DC. And as I mentioned earlier, the National Medical Advisor for NADSP and a very good liaison with the American Academy on Developmental Medicine and Dentistry. So Dr. Rader, thank you for doing this for us. The, the, the timeliness is incredible. Your information is necessary for DSPs to really know what's happening out there regarding these vaccines. So please take it away. Great, thank you. Firstly, I wanna thank Joe and the NADSP for the opportunity to speak to you about something that has virtually changed everything, including the way we live. I'm Dr. Rick Rader. I'm a physician in Chattanooga, Tennessee, specializing in intellectual and developmental disabilities. One of the most satisfying parts of my career has been to work with direct support professionals. I support them, I teach them, I counsel them, and most importantly, I think I learned from them. That role has led me to become the medical advisor to the National Alliance for Direct Support Professionals, known as the NADSP. Let me start off by saying that I'm not a DSP, so you will never hear me say, I know how you feel, or I understand what you're going through, because I don't. No one but another DSP could ever say that. Everything I know about DSPs, I've learned from DSPs. COVID is cruel to people with ID, as in many aspects of life, they get the short end of the stick. They get hit faster, harder, and more severe. I wanna to talk to you about the 800 pound gorilla in the room, and that's obviously the COVID-19 pandemic. And with that, the COVID vaccine, which we hope will literally be the tranquilizer dart, or at least the cage to control the beast. The COVID virus affects the individuals you support many times worse than people without intellectual disabilities. They and you are more vulnerable and therefore at greater risk and greater need to be protected. They die from COVID at a rate of three times that of people without intellectual disabilities. Let me address some of the more pressing questions that DSPs have asked about regarding the vaccine. One of the biggest concerns is the question, can the COVID-19 vaccine give you the COVID virus? The answer is the vaccine will not give you the virus. None of the currently used COVID vaccines use the live virus that causes the disease. Instead of using a live virus, the vaccines use genetic material from the virus that gives our bodies the instructions on how to use your natural immune cells. 
These are the cells that kill the outside invaders. The vaccine actually gives your body the intelligence needed to prevent the virus from gaining entrance into your cells. There are people who are against any vaccines for any disease, and they spread false information about vaccines. You need and deserve accurate, reliable, and factual information to make your decisions. Vaccines have been proven to be an effective disease fighter for several hundred years. It was a vaccine, in fact, in 1796 that led to the eradication of smallpox, once a major disease that killed millions. And it was a vaccine that conquered the polio epidemic. And many other vaccines have been used to be able to control other outbreaks of the killer viruses. To support the science that guarantees that the two currently used COVID vaccines cannot give you the virus, let's look at how viruses work. Here are the four major steps. We start off with using part of the virus that doesn't have the ability to cause the disease. They are like messengers giving us information. Next step is when these viral compounds are injected into the human body, they begin to tip off the immune system that these disease causing viruses are trying to attack the body. Step three is when this reaction prepares the immune system to identify the invaders. And lastly, step four is it alerts the appropriate immune cells that we have, our killer cells, how to defend and neutralize the viral attack. Pretty freaking amazing. Um, the Federal Food and Drug Administration, known as the FDA, has completed a thorough evaluation of both the effectiveness and safety of several COVID vaccines. They have been approved for emergency use and are currently being delivered and administered. The only side effects appear to be short-lived pain at the injection site, which is often experienced and expected with any injection and several cases of allergic reactions from patients with known histories of allergies. The vaccines have a 95% effective margin and will provide preventative protection to you and the individuals you support. Remember that the vaccines require two shots, depending upon which brand, either 21 or 28 days after the first injection. The first injection provides only about 50 to 70% protection, so you need two injections to be fully protected. In the past, it has taken up to 10 years to research, test and produce effective and safe vaccines. So how can a new vaccine that has taken us less than a year to produce give us the same confidence on safety? It's a great question. The reason for the 10 year time period has to do with regulations, research design, funding, and the slow bureaucratic process. When the government realized the enormous threat that COVID-19 virus presented, it pulled out all stops and created a program to eliminate all the barriers for a quick timeline. They created Operation Warp Speed. The term Warp Speed comes from the science fiction space series, Star Trek where the spaceships went faster than the speed of light, known as warp speed. A perfect example of how this succeeded is the example of going to get a car registered at the motor vehicle department. All in all, the registration takes about five minutes, but you might have to wait in line for several hours. The same thing happens, but a thousand times worse with vaccine research. The FDA was able to eliminate the long waiting lines. They were able to combine several of the steps that were previously required to do separately and prove the funding to move things along. The clinical tests were still conducted with thousands of animal and human subjects and no safety issues were overlooked or compromised. It was simply a matter of giving top priority to something that was determined to be of the highest need. I can share with you that both my wife who was also a physician and I have been vaccinated. Other than anticipated soreness at the injection site, neither of us have had any adverse side effects. I assure you that at the vaccine center where you will be inoculated, they have taken every safety precaution. You will first fill out a questionnaire that will identify any potential medical reasons for you not to be injected. Following the injection, you will be placed in a holding area for at least 20 minutes to ensure your safety in the event of any adverse reaction. There are medical teams available in the unlikely event you should require medical care. You are not only essential, you are vital, necessary, and the most significant weapon we have to protect the health of individuals with intellectual disabilities. So keeping you healthy is of paramount importance to the disability community. Having you upbeat and confident about the vaccine will also help to encourage your individuals to be vaccinated. No one will be forced to be vaccinated. It will be your choice. There are three reasons why people are reluctant to be vaccinated. Let's look at all three. First are the medical reasons. If you have a past medical history of having a bad reaction to any vaccine, or if you are highly allergic to the point where you have to carry an EpiPen, you may not be a candidate to be vaccinated. 
If this is the case, you need to talk to your health provider. The second reason is for religious beliefs. Most of the major religions of the world do not have anything against being vaccinated. In fact, they promote the concept of health through medical research. There are a few outlying religious groups that are against vaccinations, as well as being against life-saving blood transfusions. These small religious groups rely on the power of prayer to solve every problem and do not promote the contribution of personal responsibility and personal strength to improve life's critical outcomes. Lastly, there is simply a personal bias that often has nothing to do with logic, reason, knowledge, or experience. Your choice will be honored and respected. That being said, please remember that none of us live alone on an island or in a vacuum. We're all part of social groups, from a family to a group home, to a community, and to a country. And our actions, both positive and negative, impact on others. Your personal decisions may have impact on others, often those closest to you. Currently, we do not know of any agency or department that requires the staff to be vaccinated, but there is the possibility in the future that agencies will be able to require vaccination for employment. It is based on sound public health practices, and in the past, there have been situations where it has been necessary and mandatory, but we hope that will not be necessary. Always remember that the health and safety of both the individuals you support and the staff you work with are the two most important responsibilities that agencies have. Lastly, the vaccine is a vital and important tool against this pandemic, but it's not a magic bullet or a protective bubble. Even after being vaccinated, you will still be encouraged and in certain instances required to continue to adhere to strict CDC health guidelines, the same ones you have been diligently following since we found ourselves in this situation. We need to wear masks, keep social distancing, disinfecting our environment, and conduct ongoing hand washing. The COVID pandemic has been one of the most dangerous threats to the health and well being of our society. Your role as the DSP has never been more important, more significant, and more crucial. I hope you will see the wisdom of getting vaccinated and encourage others as well. Do this for the sake of yourselves and encourage others as well. Do this for your families and, of course, for the individuals you have committed to support. One of the ro roles as a DSP will be for you to provide counseling about the vaccine to the people you support. We need to continue our practice of supportive decision-making in regards to their ability to make decisions for themselves. Remember, remind them it is the best choice they can make in protecting themselves. It's a shot worth taking. I like to call it a smart shot, S-M-A-R-T, standing for science monitors all research thoroughly. On behalf of my medical colleagues, I want to thank you and to have you understand that we appreciate that the DSPs are the link between success and failure in the pursuit of providing the best healthcare for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. I also want to thank the many DSPs whose questions prompted us to produce this brief video. So thank you and my best wishes for your continued health and success. If any of you have any questions or need further information, you can always reach me through the NADSP. Best wishes for a healthy and happy new year. And thank you again. Thank you, Dr. Rader. And you could advance to the next slide, if you would, please. Um, we, we are going to be ending this year up with this note and this message. And it's my wish that every DSP has the opportunity to listen to this 15-minute webinar and to get the information that they need to make an informed decision and also help the people that you support make an informed decision about their own vaccines. I don't think there's anything more important to our service system today than the vaccine. Um, one, one more slide, please, Doc. And to reach us, you can just follow us on Facebook, go check out our website. Um, this video will be posted to our YouTube page, the NADSP. And before we sign off, I want to thank Dr. Rader for his ongoing support and assistance throughout the pandemic. He's always accepted our invitations to speak to our audiences with grace and with dedication and with the most up-to-date and current information that is available in, across the medical community. So Dr. Rader, thank you. Happy New Year. DSPs, please share this far and wide. We need you to make these decisions smartly. And if you are able and healthy to get this vaccine, we wish that you do. So thank you very much and have a great Great new year.